uh, this afternoon, I just want to share with you about something that the Lord has laid on my heart. And the topic is faith that overcomes. The faith that overcomes. The faith that overcomes. Uh, let me just ask you to smile to your neighbor and make sure, you know, the atmosphere is, uh, is anointed, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I just want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, where the presence of God is, there is fullness of what? Fullness of joy. Amen. Go with me to 1 John chapter 5, and we will read verses 4. 1 John. First John chapter number 5, and then verses 4 and 5. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Wow. Father, we thank you for this beautiful afternoon. We submit under the unction of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we decrease that you will increase in our midst and break the bread of life. Open our understanding to what you want to speak to us this evening. Build us. We return all the glory and praise unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Faith that overcomes. The Bible says that for whatsoever is born of God, it overcomes the world. That is pretty exciting, isn't it? But then the Bible goes ahead to describe to us something very important. That this is the victory that has overcome the world. And I believe if somebody is speaking about something that has registered success, everyone is uh, very excited, everyone is very attentive, wants to hear, what is this uh, that has ensured, that has guaranteed success? For example, if somebody is making a presentation and is like, oh, I want to tell you five uh, keys that have led to my success, man, everyone will be attentive. We want to grasp those five points. How is this person successful? How has this marriage succeeded? So even the Bible brings out something. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Everyone is like, okay, what is this? We want to know because every one of us wants to have the victory. Every one of us wants to overcome. Every one of us wants to have a great end, isn't it? And the Bible says, this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me put the grammar right. The Bible does not say, this is the victory that will overcome the world. No, the Bible says, this is the victory that has overcome the world. In other words, it has worked, it has been proven, and it has overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Just like in the medical world, uh, before we take the medicine, what happens? There is, uh, I think, a whole, a whole department that must verify that the medicine that was invented or whatever manufactured uh, is actually able to heal that particular sickness. In Uganda, we have what we call the national drug authority so every medicine will be checked out before it is put on market why to verify that it can actually heal and if it is verified by the technical people then it will be allowed on the market okay if you take these tabs two times three you'll be healed of this why it has to be proven Ladies and gentlemen, I have good news this evening that faith overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Praise the name of the Lord. 
this is the victory. It is not something we are going to experiment. It's not something that is subject to, uh, I mean, that is subject to discussion. It is something that has worked. It is something our forefathers, you know, walked by faith and pleased God by faith and overcome by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Even today, as the church, that's why the Bible says we are more than conquerors. That means challenges will keep coming. I don't think there is enough prayer that will say, oh, no more challenges in the name of Jesus. Man, challenges. <laughs> I love the African preachers because sometimes I get so hype and say, today, from today, no more challenges in your life. And I'm like, oh, hallelujah. But you know, that sounds like it's not right. <laughs> because you know, challenges keep coming. Uh, I had a good friend who told me, Henry, they are, I mean, challenges will keep coming because there, is, uh, there were two people in the church and one person actually didn't have anything to eat and another person you know was blessed and i just bought a refrigerator so as these guys were in church praying they all had challenges one person had a challenge because she did not have what to eat so she was like god you need to do a miracle that we get something to eat right but there was also somebody who had bought a refrigerator and had stocked all the meat and the milk and everything. And you know, in Uganda, uh, electricity is not reliable. So she was also praying and interceding, God, I pray that the power will not go off today because I've stocked my fridge. That was another challenge. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes somebody will, will think that is not a challenge, but it is also a challenge what am i trying to say that challenges will keep coming but in all things we are more than conquerors yes. amen and why does the bible say this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith it means our faith is the victory we possess and it is what pushes us to the ultimate destination to the ultimate testimony. In other words, if I'm sick today and God says, I am healing you, I have healed you. I mean, it may not be instant, but this is the victory that I have. I will walk with this victory to my healing. Amen. Amen. I will walk with this victory. In other words, even before I get the healing, I already have the victory over the sickness. And it is what I hold on and I walk with it to my complete healing in the name of Jesus. And this afternoon, I just want to bring three reflections about how does our faith overcome? Amen. How does our faith overcome? Point number one, the first reflection I want to bring about is faith believes the future. Faith believes the future. Faith believes the future. Do you mind if you just tell your neighbor what I've just said? You know, I'm a, you know we, we have a school and I enjoy spending time with the kids. So sometimes don't get offended when I say, okay, can you speak this? You know, that's how I do with our children because when we are teaching them, I have to make sure that they understand the word of God. So I tell them, okay, can you say what I've said to your neighbor? And sometimes when, they are, when they've been playing, they can't understand what I've said. <laughs> Amen. So faith believes the future. Hebrews 11 verses 1. What does the Bible say? Hebrews 11 verses 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is the definition of faith. It is the substance of things hoped for, but also the evidence of things we cannot see. I believe sometimes too many people who don't believe in God, they really get messed up really good. Because how do you have evidence over things you have not seen? How do you confirm things when you've not seen them? How do you even claim you have a receipt for something you have not bought? Isn't that madness? 
probably you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> but that's what the Bible says. Faith is a substance. It's something real. It's something you can feel. It's something tangible. Praise the name of the Lord. And it is the evidence of things we have not seen. We have not seen them physically, but we perceive that God has already done them. We perceive that God is doing them. We perceive that God is going to do it. And we are persuaded beyond any shadow of doubt that God is going to make it happen. Sometimes we don't have any clue how it is going to happen. But we are persuaded that it is going to happen. This is how our faith overcomes. Because it believes the future. What the enemy does is to blindfold our eyes about the future, about the bigger picture, about what God is doing in our lives, about where God is leading us. And he will discourage us. He will make us focus on our circumstances. He will preoccupy us by the negatives, by things that are putting us down, by, by, by the negative opinions. And he tell us, Man, you cannot do that. You're not good enough. I mean, you are not good enough. Just look at yourself. I mean, and, and, and you go and look at yourself in the mirror and say, just look at yourself. I mean, just be honest to yourself. I mean, you're not good enough. And, and many people believe that. And they take off their eyes on the bigger picture. They take their eyes off the future. And the enemy wins in that case. How does our faith overcome? Our faith overcomes by believing the future. Praise the name of the Lord. David said, even when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear not. Why? But I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. But I fear not. And as you continue to read, he says, but I can see something. What did he see? I can see he has prepared a table before my enemies. You know, I'm going through the shadow of death. I'm going, he must have been going through a terrible situation. You know, something unpleasant. Something that was pressing him down. But as he continued to move, he said, I fear not because God is with me. And he kept on moving, kept on moving. And God opened his eyes. And he was able to see the table prepared before his enemies. So faith believes the future. My dear friends, we all have a future in God. We all have a better future in God. I mean, it does not happen just in the twinkling of an eye. But I believe God is in the process of making us, of building us up for something greater. Something greater than our, uh, our, our eyes, our minds can comprehend. But it's building us for a good work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what God spoke to me. I remember, you know, many, day, many years ago, growing up from a broken family, growing up out of rejection, and, uh, you know, people would come and speak and prophetic words and I remember sometimes people would pull me on the front and tell me and speak words like you know God is going to do a great work God is you know God is going to build you up we see you going to the nations and all this stuff and I'm like God you know wait a minute why don't you just give me dinner and we will talk about this later you know because <laughs> Because, you know, you've spent days without eating, but somebody speaking is bombarding your mind with the prophetic words that God is going to do great things. God is building you up. God is going to make you a great, a great server. You know, he's going to use you. And you're like, God, all I need is a burrito. Oh, God. All I... <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> but, you know, God looks at the future. And faith looks at the future. That's why the Bible says, I have good plans for you. Plans to give you a great future. I have good plans. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe today that God has good plans for our lives. To give us a good ending. But it is a process. 
It is a process we go through. And the enemy in the process, he tries to discourage us. He tries to weaken our faith. He tries to put us down. But we must rise up. We must rise up because we are destined to victory. This is the victory we have that has overcome the world. What is that? Our faith. Amen. So number one, faith believes the future. Young people, believe that you have a great future. You are great people. God is building you for something better. Old people believe that God is, build, God is doing a great work. I love what the Bible says that uh, those, the righteous people, they will continue to bear fruits even when they are old. They continue to bear fruits. They continue to be relevant. They continue to nurture. They continue to empower others. So every one of us has a great future in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, stretch your hand and say, Lord, I believe you that I have a future. And you are building me to that great future. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a clap offering. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. And the second reflection I want to speak about is uh, faith gives the best. How does our faith overcome? It overcomes because faith gives best. Tell me about a man of faith and a woman of faith. I'll tell you about the quality of their sacrifice. Tell me about a man of faith. I'll tell you about the quality of their sacrifice. Faith gives the best. And don't be scared. It doesn't only concern the wallet alone. Don't be scared. It goes around many things. It speaks about what we offer to God, what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. It speaks about our ministry to God. It speaks about how, you know, how we handle what God has put in our hands. You know, faith gives the best. Hebrews 11 verses 4, the Bible says, Hebrews 11 verses 4, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and through, through it, he being dead still speaks. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. The difference is they all offered, but Abel offered by faith. That's why he went around his flock and looked for the best sacrifice. Why? Because he had the revelation of whom he was offering to. And he knew that I am going to stand before the God, the creator of heaven and earth. The one who has given me the strength to do everything. I am going to offer to him. It's a privilege that I can offer unto God. And he looked for the best sacrifice. And he gave to God. I believe Cain just did it religiously. He didn't even, he was, maybe he was even, you know, preoccupied with many things and just, you know, got whatever was left, uh, whatever he could get from the garden and just, you know, offered. But he did not put his heart to it. Probably maybe he should have looked out for something, exchanged his agricultural products and got something really fatty that would move the heart of God. But the Bible says, <laughs> by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. By faith. So faith gives the best. How does our faith overcome? Because faith causes us to give the best to God. Faith causes us to lay down our lives to the glory of God. Faith causes us to say, God... Have your way in and through my life. Faith causes us to say, God, I don't want to hold on to myself. But I want you to have your way. I want you to have the best of me. 
I want you to have the best of my strength. I want you to have the best of my intellect, the best of my gifts, the best of my everything. Let whatever you've given me work out for your own glory. Hallelujah. Faith will stir up our hearts to give God something that is really good. To give something that is glorious. To give the best of ourselves to him. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> you know, I remember sometimes uh, one person was speaking to me when uh, I finished Bible school and he, he said, Henry, we believe. It was a time when I was in the crossroad and uh, I knew God had called me for ministry, but then I was young. I was really contemplating many, many things. I had friends we had gone to school with and uh, I really wanted to make the best life. So uh, my, my brother, all of a sudden, uh, had gotten an opportunity and was trying to, uh, to set himself up in the UK. So he came back and said, oh, Henry performed well at college, so he needs your help. And he was like, okay, I will help him. He processed everything, and uh, he wanted to give me an opportunity. I remember I was I just finished Bible school, but one night, one of uh, the friends we went to school, at, we went to Bible school with, had a horrific night, and he saw me uh, walking on a journey, and I was towards a city. Then I got weary, I got tired, I sat down, I started removing the shoes, and this guy cried unto God and prayed for me all through the night. But you know, it was because I was going through many uh, challenging situations. And I, I felt like, God, I can't bear. I can't bear this, you know. You serve God, no, no nothing, no money, no nothing, you know. Everyone laughs at you, everyone, you know, mocks, everyone thinks you, you know, everyone, everyone thinks you, you, you don't understand. I mean, you're, you're dumb. Sometimes you're also made to believe that you... You're like that because you know, things are not happening. It's a wilderness experience. So I was trying to run away from what I believe God had called me into. And uh, this friend of mine told me the dream and I knew exactly what it meant. But uh, it took the grace of God. I did not explain to her what was happening in my life. But I went and repented before God. And I told him, God, if this is what you've put for me, I surrender my life to you. And I choose to go your way. I choose to lay down my ambition. I choose your way. And I remember I got all the letters and all the applications. I tore them to pieces. I knelt in my small self you know in uganda we have uh, both we have the self-contained houses but by that time i was living in a self-condemned house not a self <laughs> <laughs> so it was not self-contained it was self-condemned because it was just one one small room you know with the curtain that divides the living room and the sitting room and <laughs> hallelujah and it was for 15 bucks 15 dollars a month but, you know, I had to pray and fast that God will make a miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. It's, uh, how does it sound to the American? <laughs> it sounds like one, one, one meal, uh, one McDonald's meal, right? <laughs> but somebody has to pray and fast. So it was, I mean, it was a real challenge. But I remember... One, of, one person came and prophesied to me and said, because you have given God your best, he will return his best to you. Praise the name of the Lord. And I realized when we give God our best, we are doing ourselves a favor. Amen? Because we are attracting his presence. We are hosting his presence. We are attracting his favor upon our lives, upon our families, upon 
the generations that are even going to come. So faith overcomes. And how does it overcome? Faith gives the best. Amen. Show me a man of faith. In Africa, we have people who tell you, oh, I have the faith of God. You know, they will put in some gymnastics. I'll say, okay, show me a man of faith. I'll show you the quality of his sacrifice. I will evaluate him or her by the quality of his sacrifice. I want to encourage you today. I believe God wants us to give him his best. Not just about money alone. Of course, he owns everything. You know, even when we are giving, he's just giving us an opportunity to give. Amen. He owns everything. He, I mean, but also, in, it applies in everything. Finances, but also our own hearts. That's right. If I can ask today, how much of you does God have? How much of you? On a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> some, of, some of us, he has 0.00029%. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but God wants to be the Lord and the Savior of our lives. Amen. Amen. Just lift up your hands. Father, we thank you. Just speak to him and tell him, God, I want to give you my best. I want to offer my life to you. I lay down everything to the glory of your name. Father, we thank you for today. Faith gives the best. Our faith in you. Let it stir up our hearts to lay down our lives to the glory of your name. Father, we choose to honor you in every way. We choose to honor you with our talents, with our giftings, with our callings, with our finances, with everything that you have deposited in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, give him a clap of praise. And allow me to, allow me to wind up with this. Faith overcomes the world. How does our faith overcome the world? Our faith overcomes the world because faith moves forward. Say with me, faith moves forward. Faith moves forward. Amen. You are incredible people. I feel like preaching again. Exodus for. Exodus 14, <laughs> Exodus 14 uh, from verses, let us just read verses 15, but it's, when you have time, read from verse 13, but let us read verses 15. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go where? Forward. Why are you crying to me? Why are the children of Israel crying to me? Why are you crying to me? Just tell them to move forward. Amen. Amen. So they were, I mean, we all know the situation that they were caught up in a, a challenging situation. And, you know, uh, the Pharaoh and his armies, the, they were pursuing them. And then all of a sudden, before them, what do they see? The Red Sea. And they're like, God, we are caught up in this situation. We don't know what to do. I believe all of us have been there, right? Yeah. All of us have been there. Yeah. You know, we, 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 have, uh, we are reaching out to the kids, and sometimes I've shared these testimonies with Pastor Pat, that sometimes you reach, uh, you, re you are pressed to the wall, and they are asking you, please, what are we going to eat this week, Mr. Director? And you're like, oh, hallelujah. They say, what are we going to eat this week? <laughs> How are we going to pay the salaries of the teachers? And you're like, at the wall. You don't know what to happen. And sometimes you have to lock yourself in the bedroom and say, God, 
Only you can do this. God, I surrender to you. God, do something. But I want to tell you, our God is not, our God is infinite. Our God, you know, we cannot master him. We cannot, you know, get the greater God and put him in our, <laughs> in our small minds. He's a great God. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes I've had testimonies when somebody just, you know, call or calls Jackie and say, please, I have here corn which we are not using. Can you use this? Do you need it? And I'm like, give us 15 minutes. We'll be right, right there. <laughs> because that is God answering our prayer. Right. Praise the name of the Lord. Many of us will be caught in situations where like, we are like, we don't know what to expect. We don't know what to do. And the children of Israel were in such, an, in such a circumstance. And they were crying unto God. But God says, why are they crying? Simply keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. Keep moving forward. There are situations that will seem like they are not going to change. But keep moving forward. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Keep moving forward forward don't give up there is there, there, there are victories that god brings when we are moving amen. amen you know in this let me give you this should be the last one i better close this thing praise the name of the lord second second uh, second kings chapter number seven i think from verse eight, three the bible speaks about the the four lepers and the Bible says, okay, a prophetic word had been given by prophet Elisha that, you know, fl uh, the cost of flowers going to come down and God was going, you know, to, uh, to do a miracle. But we, they did not know how that was going to happen. But the Bible now records the account of the four lepers, 2 Kings chapter number 7 from verse 3. Uh, the Bible records an account of the lepers who were seated outside the gate. And they spoke to themselves, say, okay, why should we sit here until we die? Sometimes we need to ask ourselves questions, right? Why should we not do this? Until, why should I just live like that and I don't make an impact? Why should I, you know, can't I do something for God? Some, why should I sit in the church for three years and I, you know, I can't even welcome people in the sanctuary? Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, why should I spend five years in church and I've never brought any person in church? Sometimes we need to ask ourselves, say amen. amen. So this, this, these guys started asking themselves questions. Why should we die while seated here? And they are lepers. They are locked outside. And they said, now what should we do? One of them said, let us go to the camp of the Assyrians. That, that really, really uh, sounded like a strange counsel. Because the Assyrians, it was like a, you know, a fortified place. There are armies there. But they said, let us move to that place. And what I love about this scripture is when they started to move, they didn't know what was happening in the spiritual realm. They didn't know. But when they reached the camp, they found everyone had fled away. And the Bible says, God had caused their steps to be heard like a mighty army. And the Assyrians said, Ah, the Israelites has, have hired the Egyptians and they are coming against us. And it is amazing that God timed lunch time. I think lunch or dinner time. I think lunch time. And you know, they left everything. They ran away. Why? Because four lepers, not even normal people, four abnormal people. By that time, if you were a leper, you were considered to be abnormal, unfit, unworthy. Four lepers, they made a decision. They say, let us move. And when they move, they God, the creator of heaven, came and moved with them. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And God caused their footsteps to be heard like a mighty army. When God, when we move, God also moves. Many times we pray and say, please, God, you have to move. And it's like, why are you not moving? 
I can only move when you're moving. I said, God, please, you have to move, God. I said, no, you, 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 you have to move. That's why the Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. But you've got to stretch that hand and lay the hand on the sick person. Praise the name of the Lord. And then trust him for healing. Do something. Move out of the box. I mean, it's good to pray, but get out of the prayer closet and let God move with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith moves forward. Faith moves forward. Whether we have the victory today, whether God has done the miracle, whether the miracle is still on the way, keep moving. Keep serving, keep worshiping, keep loving God, keep testifying, keep serving, keep smiling, keep believing, keep walking, keep standing in the name of Jesus. Let us stand up on our feet in the name of Jesus. Faith believes the future. Faith gives the best, but also faith moves forward. I feel God is encouraging us this evening and i believe god wants to activate our faith because he's building all of us to greater things the bible says without faith nobody can please god nobody can please god the bible says they just shall live by faith there is no way there is no way we can live without faith because we have to hear the word of God. We have to believe the word of God. We have to build ourselves on the word of God. And we'll be challenged many times. But we encouraged this evening because this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. 